Hello! In this video, I will show you how to use structured data types in Straton. I will take advantage of this video to also show you some general hints about Straton, like how to automatically complete the name of a variable when you declare it in ST, how to use the spy list to check the values of a structure member, for example, or even how to use the recipes to initialize structure, mem structure members. So, first, we will create a new project. I click on File, Add New Project. And I will call it demo struct. I press next and finish. So structures can be declared in the types in Straton. This is either accessible from here in from this button, open types, or as a shortcut in the, the project list. You right click on the project, shortcuts, and here types. We can see it is already declared as a shortcut in the project list, types, and here, structures. To add a new structure, I click on insert type. I will call it my structure, for example. And to insert variables, you click on insert variable. I can add bvar of type boolean. I click on the insert button to insert a new variable or on the insert variable button. DIVAR for a double integer. And the last example, I can create a real bar. And I can also, if I want, declare it as an array. So it means that here I can put a dimension. And in my structure, I will have five elements of type real. Okay, so then how to use it? I will use it in the main program. By default, this is in FBD, but uh, I will change it to ST so I can, this is more easy, this is easier to see how it looks like. So I right click on the program, convert program to ST. It says that the project must be built without errors before doing the conversion. I click on yes, I want to continue. So we can see the build output, no errors are detected. And then I click on OK. It says that the editor says that I can convert it back if I want. OK, so then there is a small logo indicating that the program is in ST. I open the program and then I will first add a variable with the type structure of the type I just created before. So I click on insert. You can call it my variable, for example. And then I will have to choose the type of the structure I created. So if I go again in the structures here, I can see it's called my structure. So in ST, my variable must have the type my structure. So I type my. I see the blocks for SQL, and then my structure is here. OK, now how to use it in the ST program. I will start to type the name of my variable, so my, and then I can use control space to autofill the name of the variable. So now there is only one variable, so control space automatically outputs my variable. Then this is the structure, so I have elements. So I type the dot to see elements of my structure. And I can see that Straton is proposing automatically the members of the structure. So bvar, divar, and also the real variable, which is an array. So I can force, for example, this value, rvar, the first or second element in the, in the array. OK, so in fact, it starts from zero. So two is in fact the third element in the array. We will see it just after. I click on OK, and then I assign it to a real value. So I type real and the hashtag to, to cast the value, and then one, two, three, uh, dot four, for example. Do not forget, forget the point and comma. And then you press enter, it says nothing, so it means that it recognizes that this variable and this element is existing. I build the project, I go in simulation or online, 
So I will choose simulation, for example. Okay, and then the application is running. As it is a structure, we cannot see, as it is an array in a structure, we cannot see the debug uh, here. So if I press show value in text, there is nothing displayed here. So how to check the values of this structure? I will use the local spy list here. So I'm in the program main and here I have a local spy list. I click on the variable, I drag and drop it in the spy list. Or I can also double click in the spy list and choose the variable here. And then I can see my structure. If I expand it, I can see every element of my structure. And if I expand the real variable, which is an array, I can also see the five elements from zero to four, the five elements of my array. So here I can see I set my variable dot irvar of and of two and it's here. Okay. So then how to set initial values on structures? You can do that either from the types here. So you can set an initial value on this element, for example, and say it will always be true. But this means that every structure you will create with type my structure will have this element with, with the initial value true. So what we will use are the recipes. By default, when you create a new project, a recipe is created automatically. It's called initial values here. So if I double click on it, you can see there are by default three columns, the name, so this will be the name of the variable, a colon called value, this will be the value of the variable once you are in debug mode, and a colon called initial value. The name of the colon doesn't matter. So it means that, for example, here I can press call, colon, it, it's okay. How to use the recipes? I just double click in the recipe to add a, a variable, so here my structure. I press OK. I can also do a drag and drop from, from the programs here. I expand. OK. And then I can see every element of my structure. Here in the first column, I can say that by default, if I apply this column, B var will be equal to true, di var to two, for example. And then reals can be one, two, three, four, five. This recipe, so I will go in simulation to, to check what happens. Start. By default, I can see that automatically the elements of my structure have uh, took the value of this colon. So why? This is because by default, when you create a new program, you have exception programs, which are also created automatically. And here you have a p startup program. And this is the really very first program which is executed when you start the application. So if I open p startup, I can see that here in this p startup, it calls apply recipe colon. Here the name of the recipe, so initial values. This is the name of the file here, initial values, and the number of the colon. So it starts from zero after the colon value. It means it means that here zero. If I open the initial values, it's this colon. So I can ch change the this colon name, for example, and say colon zero. So when it applies colon zero, I, I can see in the recipe that it's colon zero. Okay. So it means that on P startup, if I go in simulation again, it applies this colon zero from initial values and here it goes in the values of the structure. How to use the recipes? You can also, uh, so recipes it's not only for initial values. You can also create other columns. So for example here I can insert a new column or you can also say that bvar, for example, here is equal to false. Uh, the, the, uh, the double integer variable is 54. Here I can choose another value. If 
5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Didn't work, sorry. 2, 1. The real variable here cannot be changed because it's set in this program. But it doesn't matter. So then I have some values. So for example, it's a specific state on my, my machine. I can here right click and click on save recipe. It will save these values and I can say it's a state one, for example, on my machine. So it means that if I reinitialize the program, here I start the project again. Okay, it recompiles, it starts. Do you want to start? Okay, it applies colon zero by default because it's called in the P startup. I can assign this state one. I right click here on state one, send recipe, and it goes back with the values I had before stopping the application. In the case you forget how some blocks are used or things like that, you can just click on the block, you press F1, and then you have some help. So for example, here for apply recipe colon, it opens the help saying that the, the first parameter is the fine, that the colon parameters is a double integer starting at zero. So the first colon is colon zero and an output uh, indicating if the apply recipe worked or not. Okay. So I think that's enough for today. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.